we go. Um, so, so this, this is, is Arcos. Arcos. <laughs> no, we need three people to leave. All, All right. right. Um, so, so this is Arcos. Arcos. Um, this is September 1st, 2020. Um, and welcome to the fall 2020 semester. It's really good to have you aboard right now, despite this, uh, this uh, kind of arcane semester. We're sitting at, oh, let me see. I lost my window. We are sitting at 127 people. So that's not bad for a semester when, you know, pretty much everything is, is um, having issues and we don't really know exactly what we're doing. Um, but this is the first meeting of the semester. Um, I want to talk a little bit about ARCO, what ARCOS is today. I'll, I'll give you the, the, first, uh, the first little sequence of slides and then we'll kind of turn it over to our uh, coordinators who do an excellent job of, of running most of the uh, student-facing parts of this. Um, so ARCOS is uh, a community here at RPI. Um, it's both a class and a student-led organization, so we're a little bit of a chimera or a hybrid. Um, our mission here is we want to cultivate an inclusive, creative, and entrepreneurial community that seeks to empower students to develop open source solutions to real world, world problems. So there's a lot here. Um, we've worked through this a couple of times over the years. But what I want to stress here is that we, we are inclusive. We try to be creative. I don't submit to being all that creative myself, but I recognize it when I see it. Um, and entrepreneurial open source is not free necessarily. Um, there's nothing that stops you from taking open source software and making a bundle off it if you can get somebody to pay you. And there are business strategies that allow you to do it. So we're really happy about the whole, um, you know, keeping things uh, open for people to use, but at the same time, uh, making it something where, you know, if you want to, you can go off campus and make some money um, with any luck. Uh, it does have to be open source. So... Um, that's really, you know, one of the issues. There's some questions about what open source actually means. Uh, open source, we use a fairly narrow, use a fairly narrow um, definition by some means. But on the other hand, uh, open source was coined. The phrase open source was coined by the Open Source Initiative, and they have a lot of licenses that fall under the open source rubric. We'll give you a bonus session at some point this semester that talks about licenses and licensing. Maybe we could even get uh, Paul, um, Patrick Masson from the OSI to come in and give us, a, give us a talk. But basically, if you're doing a project here, it has to be licensed under one of the, uh, the licenses that the OSI uh, has actually you know, kind of blessed or, or uh, approved. And what this basically means is that it has to have has to meet these four definitions. Um, you have to be able to give it away. So if you get the source, you can give it to somebody else. It has to come with the source code. You have to be able to derive works, which means you can work on it. Um, you know, basically what it means is that what you'd expect. If it's an open source software project, it's something that you're working on that the public can see and other people are welcome to use and encouraged to use. And, you know, we find that this works pretty good for us. And I think in general, um, there's a lot of good that comes out of, uh, out of open source software. And it is really uh, the big stickler about, you know, if you participate, you have to be doing an open source project. Um, this is my favorite line. Uh, if you ask me if you can participate, anyone can participate. It's open source. Um, really, it's hard for us to keep you from participating. You would, you know, if, if we said no, you could still clone or fork any of our repositories and work on it on your own. Um, we prefer not to fork, so we prefer to have you working with us uh, in a uh, in a comprehensive fashion or in a in a, in a you know collaborative fashion. Let me go back up to my full screen. Um, what we'll do throughout the semester is uh, some of you will be doing this for credit, some of you will be doing this um, you know because you like to do it, um, but. What we'll do is, in the beginning of the semester, we'll, we'll come up with some projects. You have the ability to create projects. You have the ability to join projects. Um, you will work on that project after the first couple of weeks here. You work on that project uh, on a team, generally. Some of you will do it. Um, some of you will do it for uh, uh, solo. You work on the project all semester. We'll be meeting twice weekly. Nominally, it's 4.45 to 6.35, although we're going to be tolerant with asynchronous. I think Frank's going to talk about that uh, in a little bit. Um, but the idea is we meet 
you view the meetings or attend the meetings live, you work on your, your, your software for a couple hours twice a week, and then you work on it between because you are going to be, uh, we are going to look at everything you do uh, over the course of the semester uh, and evaluate that. You know, we don't think that you can do a good job in four hours a week. So do plan to put some extra time in there. Um, and then, um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much all on this slide. One thing I do want to talk about um, is when we have projects, one of the things that we like to say is that this is one of the places where you're allowed to fail. And what that means is not that you're allowed to get an F. It means that not all projects succeed. Some projects go well beyond the scope of what you think they are. Uh, some projects are just bad ideas. Um, this is your chance to explore it. It's your chance to learn new technologies. We will look at what you do, do, do during the semester. We will be looking for effort. Um, we will be looking at how you overcame problems, how you recognized problems, how you re regrouped. Um, but if at the end, your, your program, you know, we're not going to give you a grade and your program crashes so you get a zero. Um, we do want things that progress. We do want learning. We do want projects that maybe don't achieve all of their goals in their first semester, but are but that are well structured enough to uh, to continue on past the semesters and maybe get beyond what you even thought you could accomplish. I want to introduce the team here. Um, I am Professor Turner. I do a lot of talking. Um, Professor Kuzman, do you want to say hi? Sure. Hello. I'm Konstantin Kuzmin. I'm a lecturer with the Department of Computer Science. Should have probably... Hmm. There's Professor Kuzmin right down in the corner there. That didn't work so good. I'll have to do a better, uh, a better transition. Um, Looked nice. Yeah, uh, a nice, a nice infinite regression. Um, I think the problem is, is I had myself pinned in the WebEx meeting, and that's kind of egotistical. Let's unpin me. Um, and now, when I do that, and turn off my video for just a second, what you'll see is uh, hopefully Professor Kuzmin coming up. Um, there you go. That's him static. There you go. Just as good looking in person. All right. Um, I'm going to leave this like this for a minute. I think we also is uh, is uh, uh, David, uh, Professor Goldschmidt. Are you here today? So if you have any problems with paperwork or any of that, um, Professor Goldschmidt is the person to talk to. Um, but he's not at a lot of these meetings. He's uh, very busy as well. Um, so, you know, he's probably not here today. I think the rest of the people we have are the coordinators. Uh, do you guys want to kind of pop up? Um, let's start. Sure. Okay. My name's Frank Matrenga. I'm a, wow, I'm a junior now studying ITWS and CS. I'm a GitHub campus expert. I've been doing open source for a long time. Uh, I'm a coordinator here and also the head of the late project. Sounds good. Um, and by the way, late is kind of a cool project for helping you schedule your uh, your off campus semesters, uh, since there are so many of us classes are off campus. Um, Olivia, Stephen, Kate. Sure. Um, hi. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm Stephen. I'm now a senior. I've worked on a whole bunch of projects over the years, though I think this year I'm going to work on finishing up observatory and maybe working with some others to really make the Arcos website really good. And who knows, maybe something else. Cool. I think that's your, uh, your key, Olivia. Hi, I'm Olivia. I'm a senior computer science and mathematics dual major. Um, I do a lot of organization work um, and kind of, I guess, people management work in terms of Arcos, um, and I do my best in order to try and keep on top of, um, you know, making sure Arcos runs as smoothly as possible at all times. <laughs> so, Which um, is if a you have, job. pardon? It's a full-time job. Yeah. <laughs> so, if you have any questions about the class structure or how anything goes, 
No, I probably know. <laughs> Kate, I see you sitting there now. I've made sure you're there. Want to say hi or? Uh... Hi, uh, everyone. I'm a. Uh... Ooh. According to the registrar, I'm a senior. Um, third year though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> computer science, and uh, I'm trying to uh i i'm mainly i think i'm known for mainly doing like rust and minecraft modding but i um i'm trying to branch out a little bit this year so maybe i'll be on your project cool so those are the four coordinators those are the people you can blame when everything goes completely awry because uh professor kuzman and myself you know couldn't be our fault that would be wrong we're ready Exactly. <laughs> um, let me see. Let me turn my video back on and we'll continue on. Okay, no more infinite regression. All right, so um, that was the team. Let's see what else. Give me a, a little, little bit, bit of the history. history. Arcos, Arcos has been going, going on for a while now. now. Um, back, back in 2006, 2006 Sean O'Sullivan, one of our illustrious alums, uh, gave, gave us about $2 million to start Arcos, um, and that was a really nice um, nice gift, helped us get started. Uh, in 2007, we started the open source course. Uh, I will be teaching the third generation of that, I guess, um, in, in spring and, and possibly and, and hopefully in summer uh, this next you know, this next semester, uh, spring 2021 and summer 2021, so we were able to develop a course with it. We were able to build the club. I think the first class was about 6 to 12 people, um, and now we are up in, uh, we are about 160 right now, 170, I think. Uh, in fact, there's 143 of you uh, in the class, and that's the registered students. We generally have about uh, 20 or 30 students who are doing it because they're working on something they want to work on. Um, we, did, we, we have, have gotten, gotten some money from Red Hat, Hat in 2015. We got about three or four years worth of funding from them until, unfortunately, um, for us, they were bought by IBM for $4 billion. Uh, if you don't know the story of Red Hat, they are an open source company, and they are um, basically they get paid for making people's lives easier who want to do uh, uh, Linux. So that's... One of the ways you can make money in open source software, I always like to point that out. Um, we'll talk about a couple more ways during the semester. I've got a lot of friends in open source software, and I actually worked at a couple of open source companies over the years. Um, and they, I can guarantee you, they were trying to, uh, they were trying to make money. So um, open source doesn't mean pauper necessarily, uh, often, not always. Um, I meant to update. These numbers, but if you have been following Submitty, Submitty was a bad, bad place to be this day. Um, and I had eight labs running from 10 o'clock till, well, they're still running. Um, so I was very busy trying to put out fires with Submitty, and I didn't get a chance to update these slides. But through last year, we had 2,500 students come through. Now, these aren't unique students. Um, you know, people come through in one semester and then continue on with us for a while. Um, but we've had about 2,500 plus of them. Uh, we've had about 850 projects. And again, that's, you know, a running total. There, um, this summer we had 20 projects running. Uh, in fact, this summer we had, the most recent semester, we had 71 students registered for the course. We had about another uh, 10 uh, doing it because they wanted to work on a specific project. Um, and then you know, they, they divided themselves up into about 20 different projects, so those numbers are going to fit, fit in here as well. Uh, it's the biggest summer session we've had, um, and it was actually a, a lot of fun. Um, I think. You can ask uh, Kate was here with us. Uh, there are, I think I recognize some of the mentors here as well, um, but Kate was our resident coordinator for that, for that semester. So we've been going on. We've been growing pretty fast. We've done a lot of great projects. Um, I... I'm not insulting any projects that I don't touch on, um, but we have had some pretty pretty notable successes in the RPI community. Um, if you've used Yaks, Yaks is a, is a project that originated out of Arcos. It's being actively worked on even now. Um, I know there's a competitor to it, Quax. I wish we could get people together so that we combine our forces instead of dividing our forces, but a little bit of uh, competition does a body good. So uh, Yaks is still 
kind of the premier way of, of organizing your classes on campus. It's been going for five or six, five years, six years now. Um, if anybody wants to type the real number into chat, I looked it up um, and it's in a little sticky up on my, uh, up on my computer stand in my bedroom, six. Thanks, Nia. Submitty, up until today, I was a big fan. Now I'm still a big fan of Smitty. Smitty is one of our great projects. Um, today was not its best day. Um, they're trying to reconfigure to get more um, resources, but sometimes in reconfiguring to get more resources, uh, things get a little bogged down. We had a problem running out of workers, um, multi -pro you know, multi-threaded system. We had a problem running out of workers, and uh, I'm not sure what's, what else is happening. Uh, but they're working on that, and I can guarantee that it will be better in about a week. Every new, every semester brings new problems, and this semester is no different. Um, so, Submitty, uh, this, by the way, um, Professor Cutler, Professor Barb Cutler is um, the person who runs Submitty, but she runs it completely as an open source project. She takes people from Arcos, they work with Arcos. Uh, Arcos is kind of the umbrella organization for uh, a lot of projects. This, this is what we like to think of as one of our um, showcase products projects from the standpoint of it's a very good union between uh, students and faculty and has a longevity and a, and a, and a presence on campus uh, that is kind of hard to achieve. Yax is another one that's been uh, that has that kind of presence but they are more of a uh, almost completely student-led or I guess completely student-led would be well student and past student-led. Um, we have we have some alums that, that are still very active in it. Shuttle Tracker, if we were on campus, well, I, you guys could be on campus. Uh, if the buses are running, um, we tried to do Shuttle Tracker all this summer with no buses running, uh, which was kind of interesting. But Shuttle Tracker is, is an Arcos project. Uh, Open Circuits is another Arcos project. They're trying to take over the world and replace Spice um, with a nice, e easier to use uh, web editor kind of process. Shuttle Tracker will start running next week. Keep this in mind, y'all. Ooh, go WebTech. WebTech, by the way, is uh, the Student Senate's um, tech technology wing. They do a lot of Student Senate type of projects, a lot of uh, Student Union type projects, and they do a lot of their projects underneath uh, our umbrella. So we have a really good working relationship with them. Um, if you work with them, you know, keep that in mind. Don't ruin it for us. No, we, we always give them good students and they always give us great projects. Um, we are an affiliate member of the OSI. We were the first student-led organization to be an affiliate member of the OSI. Uh, the OSI is, is, like I said earlier, the, the, the organization that blesses the open source licenses, but they do more than that. They also advocate for open source um, and file you know, briefs of the court on things like uh, uh, IP, um, suits and things like that, trying to promote the open source environment. Um, check them out. It's, it's OSI. Uh, or we'll, we'll post that later. Um, but they're a really good organization and we, we, uh, they're, they're, one of their chief directors is actually in the Albany area, even though his business hard card says uh, San Jose, California. Um, so we will try to get him, we'll try to get him on campus in the spring semester. We'll try to get him on WebEx uh, later this semester. Thank you. Uh, Frank just paid, posted uh, https uh, colon slash slash open source.org. Thank you, Frank. Um, Stephen, you want to take over? Just say ding when you want me to when you want me to switch uh, slides. You are muted, Stephen. Oh, I see. He said he was having trouble with Wi-Fi. I could take over until he hops back in. Please do. Sure, I was also muted. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay, in that case, uh, ding. <laughs> okay, so briefly, this is the anatomy of the semester. So we have this broken into three different sections. Thank you to Olivia for making this school graphic. The first two weeks, starting this week, is the initial project definition. Then the majority of the semester is the actual development of projects with your team members, if you have any. 
And the wrap up period is towards the end of the semester. And that's where we kind of do the final presentations, um, get grade, graded and so on. And uh, Professor, could you pin yourself again? So it looks like it's showing everyone my picture instead of your uh, screen. There we go. Okay, next slide. Okay, so for the initial project definition, note that this is just for students who want to um, run a project on their own. They're going to have to pitch their projects during the next two meetings. Note that those are the next two Fridays as due to the schedule change I think next Monday or next Tuesday, it's a Monday schedule or something like that. So the next two meetings are Friday the 4th and Friday the 11th. You don't have to pitch an idea if you just want to work on a project. So this is only something that has to be done by people who have existing projects that want to continue them or people who want to propose new projects. After this, we're going to have project pairing, which we'll get into in the future weeks, which should be a lot of fun. And hopefully we'll have everyone on the project by the 15th. Next slide, please. Now, the bulk of the semester is spent on executing the project. And what meetings will look like, we'll have a review of the current status of your projects. And after that, you're expected to meet with your project for an hour and a half. This doesn't have to be exactly after. Um, we're going to leave it up to teams to figure out the best times that work for all of them to meet. And we're going to be using Venue to determine attendance. That's going to be showcased at the end of this presentation, I believe. And we'll also have more details on that as we go. Next slide. And the wrap-up period is the last three to four weeks. And this is where we start to um, slow down. Every project is going to do final presentations. This is where you summarize what you've done, what you accomplished, any surprises you reached. And of course, we'll get more into that as we get to, towards the end of the semester. And finally, on the next slide, grading. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Here's a breakdown of the grading. So again, as Professor Turner mentioned, we're not really looking for you to successfully complete a project or reach all of your milestones that you wanted to reach. What we're really looking for is consistent work and so the way that this is broken down is we're going to require you to write status updates. And those are going to cover every week what you've done, what you did, what you plan to do the next week, anything that's holding you back, attendance. And as you can see, the biggest part of your grade will be the actual contributions that will be tracked through GitHub, GitLab, or something similar. And next slide. Now to my real section. So I'll be a little smoother. How do you get credit? So as we previously mentioned, you can take Arcos as a free elective course. So for three or four credits, if you have not signed up for this on SIS, it's under CSCI 2961. It might be listed as programming in C, I believe. Don't worry about it. Just sign up for any of the sections there. It should say Arcos for the actual CRN. Note that if you have some schedule issue where you need to only take one or two credits, Reach out to any of us coordinators and we'll get that sor sorted out for you. Next slide, a very exciting slide. Okay, this has been oh, long in the making. We are switching or, well, we're going to attempt to switch from Mattermost to Discord based on the uh, improved permissions, um, just user experience, the fact that it's very popular among RPI students, but don't worry, Palmer, who likes Matter most, um, for students who can't use Discord, we are bridging messages between Discord and Matter most since Discord is blocked for some students, depending on where you live. So we still, we will remain probably for the whole semester bridging messages in between. So there should be no issues with that. But what we're looking for with Discord is you will connect through CAS. So you actually, when you get to our Discord server, you will connect with your CAS account, 
and then we will set your nickname to your name and your RCS ID. This means you won't be able to have your own username for, your, for the server, but we're going to know who you are. It's going to be way easier to figure out who everyone is. We're going to have automated scripts creating categories and private channels for your groups. It'll be much more organized going forward. And on the right, you see some of these sample channels, pretty, pretty similar to the Mattermost. And of course, since this is a school server, we're going to expect you to abide by our code of conduct and all the rules that you would expect. If you're worried about privacy, you can always use a separate Discord account to connect and just keep your own private Discord account if you want, separate. Next slide. And bonus sessions. So bonus sessions will be offered throughout the semester. And these are usually mentor-run workshops on different technologies, maybe different languages, different frameworks, and so on. And we're going to be using a similar mechanism, probably venue, for recording these sessions. And check, uh, look out for these mentors who are going to um, be doing these. We have a, a message at the end. But look out for these. I heard there were some really successful ones over the summer. So we're looking forward to really good workshops this semester as well. Next slide. Project pitches. So if you want to propose a project this semester, right now you need to do these two things. You need to submit the form, which is linked here, and we will post this link on the Mattermost and Discord. That's just going to ask you who you are, how, how many times you've done Arcos, what your project's about. Secondly, we're going to have the pitch meetings where you're going, you're going to present a single slide detailing the most important things about your project. If you can't make those meetings, we'd like you to record a short one to three minute video, send that to us, which we'll play during the meetings. But this is how you will get members to work on your projects if you want members. So we're going to have existing projects pitch first. Note the um, dates here. We're going to try to pitch existing, existing projects by September 4th. So please submit the form and send your slide to the slides channel by this Thursday. New projects will have a little more time. They'll be pitching Friday, September 11th. So try to submit your proposal, proposal form and your slides by Sunday the 6th. They will be a little more lenient. And hopefully new projects and people who are interested in proposing new projects will be able to watch the pitches this Friday to get some inspiration. And now I'll hand it off to Olivia. Thanks. So just to summarize, next class we will have the existing projects pitch their projects to the class. Um, this will be a good chance to get a good understanding of some of the existing projects. And they'll also serve as examples for how to propose a project. If you have any questions or concerns with coming up with a project or how to make your pitch, uh, feel free to ping the help desk chat on Discord. Uh, next slide. So you have a to-do list for the next class. You have four or five things to do. First, if you are going to be proposing, you know, pitching an existing project, then your project proposal and slide is due September 3rd. If you're thinking of proposing a new project, you have a bit more time. If you are just planning on joining a project, then you know, this does not apply to you. Second, make sure you're signed up on arcos.io and marked as active. This is the site where we will organize membership on um, for projects, so it's very important that you do that. Third, make sure you're signed up for CSCI 2961 on SIFS. A reminder that the course title will probably show up wrong, so don't worry about that. It will probably show up as programming in C. We're going to fix that. Um, we may also be low on seats. We're, again, we're working on it, and we'll let you know. You know, if you have any issues, you can message me. You can message Professor Turner. Uh, this is how we'll be giving you credit for the course, so at some point in the future we'll probably check in with you again on this point in order to make sure that you're all set up properly there. Fourth point, make sure that you can sign in to Submitty for Arcos. This is 
tied to cysts, so um, probably if you're not in the course on cysts, you're probably not in this committee. Again, you know, don't worry too much about it yet. Still working on it. Message a coordinator, Professor Turner, you know, if you are not able to see it and you are on cysts, because then that's not right. Fifth, join us on Discord so that we can communicate with you more responsively and quickly than email, and also answer as many of your questions as we can. This is where we'll hold the small group classes in the future also, so this is also a, a very important point. Next slide. Lastly, some notes for mentors. You are required to host a workshop this semester, so start thinking about what you want to do. Um, we'll give you a deadline at some point soon as to when your, you know, when your workshop proposal will be due, but it will be due in the next few weeks. We'll, we'll uh, tell you specifically when sometime in the near future. Uh, you can either learn, teach yourself something new and then pass that on to others, or you can deepen your understanding of something that you are perhaps already rather skilled at and share that with others. So, you know, think about, think about what you want to do. If you're interested in becoming a mentor this semester, you can sign up on the linked Google form. Next slide. All right. So now we will deal with attendance, or try to deal with attendance. All, All right, right. So, so um, let's see. Ethan, are you available? We've had uh, a couple of students, Ethan and uh, and yep. um, Numfor, and then Ahmed and uh, a number of other students have been working on venue for multiple semesters, uh, and it's finally gotten to the point where we need to do some testing and also to a point where we need a remote attendance solution. Um, and so this is kind of like a, the perfect intersection. Ethan's going to talk us through um, how to get on venue, what to do if you can't get on venue, and how to mark yourself as being here using venue. So just give me the beep when you're ready, uh, Ethan, and uh, I'll, let you, uh, I'll let you take over. Okay. Um... Uh, thank you, Tyler. I put in some uh, some crazy CSS overhauls. Uh, but venue, we, we saw an issue in being able to take attendance not only just in a normal setting, but also being able to tell uh, when students are engaging with a course over uh, other time zones. Maybe they are in China right now, and it's like, I, I can't do the quick math right now. I don't know the number offset, but maybe it's like two in the morning for them. Uh, that's not great, but we also want to make sure that they're staying engaged with the course. So yeah, this is kind of a potential solution for that. Uh, next slide. Uh, backup one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That one. Uh, Apple does not like other competitors, so camera's a little uh, <clears throat> not accessible on Chrome, Firefox, mobile. So please use Safari on iOS. Uh, thank you. Uh, yep, that's all for that slide. Okay, so two main main concepts to cover: synchronous. Basically, that's what we're doing right now. Uh, we're all together at this set time, uh, and that can also be in person. Uh, if this class had, you know, in person lectures, then you could also do that over that. You'll be scanning QR codes when they pop up, so get ready. Um, next slide. Uh, asynchronous. This is for all of the students who. For whatever reason, maybe there's an emergency and they weren't here at this two hour time, or if they're in a time zone that it's really inconvenient to be in the live lectures, then later, uh, Professor Turner is going to take this video. Uh, he's going to upload it to Venue, and then you're going to be able to have an additional set amount of time to watch that video uh, 
to mark your attendance instead of using the live attendance. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Also, if you're if you're in a live lecture, uh, a, a synchronous lecture, and let's say you're in the bathroom and there were three attendance codes and you only got two of them. Uh, you could always go back uh, to the asynchronous once that's uploaded, and you could opt into watching the entire lecture back through uh, in order to get that full 100% if you're really OCD about that. Yeah, next slide, sorry. Um, yeah, so as I said before, just to reiterate, uh, if you're here in WebEx, there's going to be QR codes. Uh, Professor Turner, uh will be probably determining when those show up. Uh, but there's also an option for him to not know when they show up. Uh, how could you scan a QR code on a laptop? Well, uh, if you happen to have, so there's there's some niche circumstances. Let's say you're connecting to class on your phone, then uh, there is a manual override. It's sort of an unfortunate circumstance, but if you are on WebEx on your phone and you can't use your phone camera to scan, then uh, let somebody know and they can manually override you. Uh, that is totally doable. If uh, in terms of scanning QR codes and you are not on WebEx on your phone, then you would log into Venue on your phone and be able to do that. Uh, you're not downloading an app, it is purely the website. Yeah. And there can also be poll questions. Oh, no, you're, you're not using the default uh, iPhone camera, although they do have default QR scanners. So Wes, do we do we want to do we want to throw up their their first QR code? Let them figure it out. Sure. Let's let's uh, let's. So what we're going to do now is I'll bring up the QR code. You guys should go to the the venue site, right, uh, Ethan? Yep. Uh, I can I can. Why don't you paste that into the chat? Yep. Uh, so that is the URL. Um, Open that up on your phone. Uh, if you're connecting on your phone, please let someone know. Uh, and uh, Wes will be able to override you uh, at some other point. Um, so yeah, uh, up to you, Wes. I think I have to reload it. Oh, no, I, I gave you a manual one instead of a... It's on the right side of your page now. The one that says open check-in one? Yep, that's that's ah, for manual ones. This has changed. Nice. Um, People so, are having trouble logging in. So so here's here's the rub on the, on, the, on the logging in thing. We took a dump from Submitty probably about a week ago. Um, so if any of you are having problems logging into Venue... It's likely because we took the dump before you guys were registered with the course. Ethan's able to uh, to to bring you um, able to add you to the course. So would it be best to have them DM you, Ethan? Uh, I I just put uh, my email in chat. Just okay. send me an email if. Uh... So if you guys can send Ethan an email. You know, don't worry if you can't get into venue today. We're not going to penalize you. Um, this is a, this is why we're doing it today, right? Is to get everybody on board. So, if you can't if you can't log into venue, it's because you haven't been added to the database, um, which means that you know essentially, um, well, it specifically means that uh, you know you're not in the submitty database yet. Um, if you need to get on submitty. Please contact Professor Kuzman or myself. If you need to get on venue, please contact Ethan. I think everything else you can self-modulate. Yes. Okay. 
and you can see the little pop-up here in the corner. I like that. Or maybe you guys can't see the little pop-up in the corner. I can see the little pop-up in the corner. All right. Um, Interesting. It might be a, it might be a WebEx share setting. Yeah. Like certain. Well, I'm compositing this using OBS so that we can do different uh, stuff. Got you. So I think that's probably what it is. I'll figure out how to do that as well. I can add another window in there for the venue code. All right. So for the people who... Yeah, synchronous 100% with the greed means that it worked. Also, for the people who are trying to scan with their, their default iOS camera, please do not do that. Uh, we want to make sure that you're not able to sort of cheat things in a way. So please go directly through uh, the web app. If you're stuck loading on the dashboard, uh, I have been made aware of that issue. Uh, I had to manually modify a lot of the database by hand a while ago, and there might have been an off by one somewhere. Uh, I encountered one with Wes uh, when, we, when we were demoing earlier, but there might be one issue on the dash page, but you should be able to get through uh, with the nav bar directly to the section. QR scanner on venue one click shows a blank screen for me. Um, are you on Safari? If you're if you're on iOS, then you should be using Safari. You are on Safari and you are getting a blank screen. Okay, for the for the people who can't uh, log in with their RCS ID, please email me. So uh, uh, one one other thing to, to remember is that this is a different website than like I, I noticed that uh, Javier is on there. Javier was in the course this summer. If you were in the course this summer, this is a different link than than uh, that we're using in the summer. Uh, we, we had a fork on the venue. Uh, one, one of our guys, guys is, is taking it um, private. So, um, you know, know, please. Yeah, so, guys, the, new, the, new, the link. new link. Yeah, I, I, had, I had put an announcement in Mattermost uh, kind of predicting that this would be an issue, but it might not have been seen by everybody. Uh, if you have this previously bookmarked, uh, or like hot loading into URL, please use the new link. Yes, this is not meant to be a, you can use your computer to, if, if you have a, a, a laptop in person lecture, then you could turn your laptop around and scare the, uh, scan the QR code that the professor is presenting. But no, if if you're if you're watching WebEx on your phone, then please DM uh, Wes so that he can use his instructor override privileges. Or actually, I might actually have that permission as well. Yes, I have that permission as well. So if if your camera is not opening or you are on WebEx on your phone, just DM me. I will I will accept all DMs. Okay. Yes, you should be watching the lecture on your computer and using the phone for your camera. That is, that is the ideal workflow here. All right. Um, I expect we're going to have some problems with this a couple of a couple of classes till we get it all figured out. Um, don't worry about you know. Don't worry about it. Like I said, this one is not going to be is not going to be a problem. Uh, if there are issues, just contact me, uh, and we will and we will try to work it out. Um, if it turns out that there's a number of you who have issues, what we've done in the summer was we we also what, uh, we also set up a a, a submitty gradable that you guys could just submit a secret password to. We can do that as well. Um, but we want we do want to try to test out this workflow. We do want to try to uh, to use this. It gives us a nice little spreadsheet that uh, 
that we can use. Uh, you don't need to find uh, the, web, the application on the App Store. Just use the Safari browser to go to the website that, uh, that um, Ethan pointed you to. Um, again, we will work this out. And uh, I'm going to, yeah, just go to the web page using Safari on your mobile, on your mobile platform. Um, and we, um, and like I said, we will try to work this out before the next, before the next class. Please contact us with any issues, but I think what we're going to do for now is, um, we, we don't have anything else, right? Uh, coordinators? We can always go back to the attendance codes, but those aren't the most trustworthy with, uh, well, yeah, and the issue with the attendance codes, too, yeah. is that um, it's, we can't do attendance codes for uh, remote operation. The other thing you can do, by the way, is if you go to venue, let me hide this. If you go to the venue website, um, in, a, in a few minutes, I'm going to upload the lecture video. You can watch the lecture video from here. So if you are not in this time zone or you're not attending live, you don't have to worry about it. The QR code, what you can do is you can watch the lecture and it will automatically track your progress through the lecture. And at the end of it, it will give you an attendance. Um, so, you know, if you just come back to here in a little bit, uh, what you'll find out is that uh, the lecture has been uploaded and it's ready for you guys to view. Most of you know, you, those of you who have watched this live won't be in this position. But for those of you who, are, who aren't watching it live, um, you know, you, by watching the video through to this point, you will get credit for the video. All right? Um, if this turns out to be, you know, if we have too many, too many issues, there are a lot of you out there. We will come up with, with multiple solutions. We will get your attendances. I promise. All right? Yeah, it seems, it seems that uh, roughly 63% of you had uh, some success with this. Uh, I have a hunch that the other... 36.9 percent of people uh it's either your account has not been created yet and please email me or there is a separate issue altogether and we needed to talk about that uh as well yeah if you guys have ever heard of something called dog fooding um it, it means uh what we want you to do is we want you to uh this is an arcos project and it's an arcos project that's been uh, live for a while now so part of making a good product is testing it and, and that's part of what we're doing right now so that's good yes we will upload the powerpoint um it will be in the slides channel both on discord and on mattermost at least for now right guys um and we will also post the video to uh i will probably post the video both the venue and maybe to youtube as well we will we will give you access to the video as well. Yes, you can take two credits. We, we try to get you guys to take three or four because it's harder to um, grade people when they're taking multiple, you know, when multiple people are taking different amounts of credits. But particularly if you're trying to fit it into a crowded schedule, we can, we can do uh, two credits. Um, we would encourage you to consider three or four though, um, but, but we can do two. All right. Coordinators, anything else? I'll be posting these slides right now on the slides channel, and that should be sent to Discord and Mattermost. Okay, and there's another little plug for Discord right here. Yes. So, you know. It seems like it worked perfectly, though. Um, a lot of people joined all at once, and everyone's nickname is properly set. So that's good. And uh, again, if, if you are you know, at a place where you, can't, you don't have access to Discord, the text channels will be accurate. We can we can echo. I think you have to you know we have we have the main ones echoed already, um, but if you need to have a channel echoed to the Mattermost, uh, we can do that. Um, and yes, I can. But you know we we're, we're not in the business of asking you to violate laws or anything of your own countries, um, so we will um, you know we will get you around whatever issues we have to do.
make Google available in China. I wish I could. All right. Um, anything else? I think if, if, with that, we're going to probably end this. Um, we're going to end this session. We will reconvene on Friday. Friday, all of you returning projects should be prepared to, to, to present. Please get your slides into us. Uh, I think it was Thursday um, was when you were asked. By the way, uh, this summer we had about 80 students, roughly. We had 20 projects. We have about twice that this semester, right? We're at 180, give or take, right now. So that means either the project is going to have to be a lot bigger, and above six, things start, you know, you start getting clicks and things. Um, so six is, you know, four to six is really an optimal project size. Um, so, so we need to have probably about 30 projects at least. So if you have a good idea for a project, please consider pitching it. Uh, if you're a returning person, please consider making your slides really, really cool so everybody wants to join. Um, you know, let's make sure we, we get a good semester going. This is the time of the year that I get very uh, concerned and scared because I never know how this is going to turn out. It always turns out great because you guys do a good job. But, um, you know, we do have to work on it a little bit. All projects have been marked inactive. All students have been marked inactive. Just go in if you're going to rework, if you're going to continue working on a project, mark it as active. If you're going to continue being you, uh, mark yourself as active. All right. Something that's a similar idea as CSCI 4440 software documentation, same idea, but okay. Um, so um, that's a really good question. Um, so basically that's software design and documentation. And the question is, if you want to work on a project in Arcos that's very similar to what you're doing in software design and documentation, what we need you to do in that case is we need you to make a distinction between the work that you'll do on Arcos and the work you'll do on software design and documentation and make that you know, as, as a clear and bright shining line as you can. Um, we will evaluate the stuff that falls on our side uh, and we will expect that you give the other stuff to the to the SDND professor. Um, who is who is the SDND professor this this semester? Okay, so um, yeah, so we surprisingly enough work very well with Professor Goldschmidt. Um, so just you know, the key is is that you can't submit the work the same work twice in two different courses. So you do have to have a bright shining line down the middle that uh, that that divides what you're submitting for, for Arcos and what you're submitting to uh, SD&D, all right? Any other, any other questions? And remember, we need about 30 projects. So if you're borderline, if you've got something cool, um, let us know. Um, we will, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a slot. Um, and it's surprising sometimes, uh, I think, we had a project on open walls, which was trying, which was doing Roblox. Uh, Kevin, you're here, right? Um, that ran this summer. That that ended up being a yep. really cool project. Go ahead. Okay, I so it went pretty well. It was it was pretty fun. Yeah, might might expand it. I don't know. So, but that, that's you just came up with that idea last summer, and it worked out really nice. So, you know, it doesn't take much to, it doesn't just have a good idea, be ready to make people excited about it. Okay. I'm signing off. I'm stopping the recording. I'm going to kick you all out of my room in a very few minutes. Bye.